So go for it. Thanks. Let's go. Okay. So hello, everybody. Um, I'm happy you all joined at my presentation. I hope you will like it. Uh, let me first share my screen. Uh, but yeah, uh, Fantishek, you need to um, stop sharing because I'm not able when you are sharing. Okay, thank you. All right. So I also prepared some slides. So I will put them on. Okay, so my topic is around infrastructure as code um, used with Terraform and Azure DevOps. And um, this is about to be more like demo. I'm not going to explain the stuff in depth. I will go through uh, some um, tools and terms. Then I have some deployment diagram and then I would like to really focus mainly on the demo. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, I, I, I created this simple slide just to tell something about myself in the beginning. So my name is Martina Rybko. I work as DevOps engineer in Accenture. It's going to be almost five years now. And uh, then, um, all in all, I, I am, um, I'm working in IT consultancy for nine years. I'm based in Bratislava and yeah, and this is about to be my demo. So, okay. So let's start with the tools and terms as um, I'm not really sure to whom I, who am I talking, like uh, whether you already know the terms or not. So uh, we, we will start with infrastructure as code. Uh, what is it? Um, infrastructure as code is the management of infrastructure in a descriptive model using the same versioning as the team uses for source code. Uh, it has evolved to solve the problem of environment drift uh, as uh, over some time each uh, environment became a snowflake and it was really hard to maintain. So um, uh, that's why um, this approach was developed uh, uh, to store your uh, infrastructure in a source code. And you really should treat it like that. So you always added just the source, but never the target in your cloud platform. Uh, another um, very um, um, interesting uh, concept of infrastructure, infrastructure is called is its idempotence, which is a, a property that the deployment command always sets the target environment into the same configuration, regardless of the environment, start, environment starting state. Um, yeah, so that means like um, you can apply the same uh, infrastructure infrastructure as code template towards your infrastructure, and if you have no changes in your code, um, nothing will change uh, in your cloud either, and only the changes that are in your templates will be updated. So that is very basic concept of infrastructure as code. Uh, let me move next. Um, Another tool we will be using uh, is Terraform. Terraform uh, is um, an open source infrastructure as code software tool that enables you to safely and predictably create, change and improve your infrastructure. Uh, they have their own uh, syntax, which uh, is called HCL syntax. And um, yeah, um, there, there are also some um, terms I would like to talk about. So, First one is a remote backend. Uh, that is a place where Terraform uh, stores a state file. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is uh, basically just a binary of your infrastructure. Uh, that way you can really maintain your um, um, infrastructure securely and still like keep it, keep everything together. Uh, this remote backend uh, is usually somewhere uh, in your cloud. Uh, I am I am uh, focusing on Asia, so I will be talking about Asia only. So uh, remote backend uh, on Asia is a storage account with a container inside of that uh, the state file is being provisioned as you run uh, the deployment. Another uh, term is Terraform provider. There are many Terraform providers, uh, whether it's for, for Azure, for AWS, there are some um, Kubernetes uh, provider, there is Azure AD provider, etc. They, they, they are basically um, 
uh, like the APIs that read the uh, the Terraform configuration and are able able to translate it to your uh, environment deployments. Um, dry parents principle uh, that is uh, don't repeat yourself. Um, uh, you can keep your backend configuration dry by defining it once in a root location and inheriting that configuration in all child, mod child modules. So um, then we have uh, this Terraform modules that are uh, the particular templates of the resources you want to deploy. So yeah, you have some structure in a repository and you put every resource in, um, in a different folder so that you can reuse them uh, once you deploy. Uh, you can deploy it many times in, ma in many other uh, main root files. Yeah, root main file is, um, is a controller file that calls the modules to be deployed. And then uh, last but not least is, um, is a Terraform um, basic command line, which, uh, um, which uses uh, mostly uh, Terraform init, validate, plan and, plan and apply. Uh, Terraform init initializes your remote backend. So it basically just connects to your storage account and, um, and uh, yeah, initialize, initializes the Terraform directory. Uh, then uh, validate is for uh, validating that your uh, syntax in your, in your templates is correct. And once that's uh, okay, uh, Terraform moves to plan where it uh, connects to your Azure subscription and uh, refreshes the state of your uh, environment and uh, creates a plan of resources you want to deploy. After that is done and you agree with the plan, you can uh, hit the Terraform apply and, um, and your infrastructure is going to be deployed in minutes. Yeah. Um, okay, this is for Terraform and um, the Sorry. <laughs> the third tool is Azure DevOps. Azure DevOps is a, is, is a great tool. I, I really like to work with it. Um, it's a software as a service platform from Microsoft that provides an end-to-end -end DevOps tool chain for developing and deploying software. It provides developer services for support teams to plan, work, collaborate on code deployment and build and deploy applications. And uh, it really helps all the developers along with the project managers to, con to, to complete their software developments. Okay. Um, this, um, these terms uh, that you can see on this slide, um, that is something uh, that you need uh, before you can uh, run uh, or deploy to Asia. So for instance, service connection, that is like a service principle, uh, which you need to connect your Azure DevOps instance to Azure Cloud. Then uh, we have here the agent pool. So um, you either use like the MS hosted agent or you create your own VM uh, in, 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 in Azure and install the agent extension on it. And this agent actually runs uh, runs the, the CI CD pipeline. Yeah, that, that's agent. I don't know how, how can I explain it better. So I hope it's clear. Then Azure, Azure repos, uh, that's where you store your source code. Um, there are many options uh, of what repos you can use. You can either use Git, TFVC, or even Bitbucket, etc. Like it is really nice how, um, how many, um, tools and extensions you can use uh, with the Azure DevOps. Azure pipelines and YAML. So that is CI CD. Yeah, I think like that is everybody familiar with already. So uh, you can run it, your uh, builds and releases. And on top of that, you can also do it in a um, cold way when you are using the YAML pipelines. Um, Azure libraries and variable groups. That is, uh, that is also a very nice feature. Uh, so um, when you deploy to many or want to deploy to 
more than one environment, it's very handy and it really helps to keep your infrastructure as code uh, dry because you don't really need to change the code if you parameterize it properly. You will just uh, replace those variables with the variable groups. Yeah, um, and you would use the replace tokens task. But yeah, I will get to that. This is just overview so that you know what, what I'm talking about when I start to run the demo. Um, I'm not sure, should I ask like any questions so far or can I continue? Looks okay. like uh, no I get it as yes. I'm checking, so yeah. I All right, so Thanks. we are, okay, so I finished the theory and now I'm going to, to talk more about what I want to show you today, actually. So this is my deployment diagram. Um, I'm going, I'm not going to deploy like a robust, robust infrastructure right now, really just a simple um, app service plan with some of uh, a few app services and um, some monitoring tools uh, that are connected to app services. But um, I really want to talk more about the process, about how it's done, because um, um, when I was looking at the Terraform first time, I, I mean, like, it is, it is really easy. Like you just, um, like you, you have the Terraform templates, which are public on the Terraform website. You just yeah, download them and, and then adjust the settings you need. That is easy, but how to make how to build your repository and how to uh, run uh, your deployments in more environments so that you don't so that you don't need to um, do many changes or so that like anybody could come and and deploy something something without having lots of knowledge about the Terraform itself. So that is the challenge, I think. So. Um, so basically in here, uh, I'm coming from the Azure rep repos where I store my uh, Terraform infrastructure as code. Uh, and I also have, the, have there uh, my Azure pipelines. So I'm keeping in source control everything. Then uh, when I want to um, deploy, I will create uh, my build pipeline then uh, that build pipeline will connect to my Azure DevOps agent. That Azure DevOps agent will connect to Terraform backend. And once the Terraform state file is initialized, it will continue the rest of the Terraform tasks to deploy this infrastructure. Okay, demo. Okay, so slides down. And uh, now uh, this is the Azure DevOps I was talking about, and this is my Terraform repo. So a little bit about this um, um, repository uh, design. So as you can see I, in, in my source folder, I, am, I have uh, three main folders. One is called CI Temples, Infrastructure as Life, and, and Modules. Uh, those two, they are they are purely about Terraform. So, um, infrastructure live as a controller over the modules. So here I am calling the yeah. I should maybe uncomment this because it won't be deployed when I want to run it. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, here I specify and I call the modules from my uh, from my repository. And also, um, I uh, specify some uh, some of the uh, variables. Um, also, I have here my um, Terraform backend uh, configuration mentioned, and then I also um, want to connect to uh, current uh, Azure configuration of my uh, subscription. Then, yeah. And then, then, then here I basically have just uh, simple Terraform templates to deploy um, some application insights and app services and, and yeah, and, and, and some app service plan. Um, yeah. Um, what is maybe a bit different than 
mm, I haven't seen this approach in, in any tutorial I was looking at, but maybe maybe some of you did, but um, how I maintain my variables is, uh, is via the uh, Azure pipeline libraries. So uh, as you can see, I have really no hard coded values in, in my Terraform repo. It is really reusable everywhere. And, and yeah, you can just take it, populate the variables somehow, and, and you can use it because it doesn't contain any, any unnecessary data that would like avoid you to deploy what you want. How the libraries work. So uh, basically, if I go here to my app service variables, uh, I have defined here that, yeah, I want to deploy this resource to some resource group with some location. Then I need log analytics parameter here. I need some staging name. Yeah, some, etc. cetera. So um, I, I will create the variables I need in here in, in, the, in the variable group. Uh, yeah, you just click on variable group and then you specify uh, the name and the value and, and you just save it, which is very nice. And that way you can, um, you can uh, create the variable scripts for uh, more environments. So, so that is very useful uh, when you are using Azure DevOps for Terraform deployment. All right. Uh, another component of this repository uh, are, my, are my YAML files, which run my uh, deployment. So. This is my uh, controller pipeline for, uh, for running the deployment. Uh, and here I specify most, in this file, I specify mostly only stages. Yeah, like, like the, um, plan and apply stage. And uh, to make it even more standardized, I, I am calling uh, YAML template. In my YAML template, I am uh, I'm specifying all the tasks that are supposed to run uh, during the deployment. So um, I have I have one uh, slide for that. So I will share my slide so that you see it in a nicer form. Um, Sorry, this is it. So, <laughs> um, so this this is my actually my task list that that runs uh, when when I, when I start a pipeline. So I'm I'm starting with a plan stage. Uh, so my app pipeline YAML connects to the validated app demo YAML so that it knows what tasks it should run. Uh, after it is uh, connected. Uh, the first task is, is to create the TF plan directory on my DevOps agent uh, where uh, the Terraform will store the plan so that it can be used later for the apply stage. Um, then uh, I am copying the files to build directory, uh, basically all my files from the build directory, or actually I think it's only the infrastructure live and modules, like so only those files. Then I am using the replace tokens tasks, uh, which I will show you when I'm off this slide, but it's a task that uh, um, based on some uh, escape character would replace uh, uh, the variables, uh, variable values from the variable groups I showed you, I've shown you uh, before a while. Okay, once the tokens are replaced uh, with the, let's say, with the dev environment uh, values, I can, I can continue to, uh, to the Terraform uh, initialization. So that is the next task. And the Terraform in, in it will initialize in my uh, main, main folder, uh, in my infrastructure live controller. And then it will continue to validate my uh, my syntax, my yeah, my configuration. And once this is okay, it will plan and it will uh, output the file to the directory I have created uh, earlier. 
Okay, so what now? Um, yeah, what, and I have this separated to two stages because you don't necessarily want the apply to uh, run without any approval because yeah, you still want to view the plan before you apply the changes or new infrastructure. Uh, and that way, uh, the, sta the stage apply is very similar, but uh, you don't need to uh, you don't need to run the validate and plan anymore, because it will use the the, the file that we have uh, created or that pipeline has created um, during its first one first run. Okay. Mm. Okay, so this is how it will run now. Run. Okay, and here I can see uh, my two stages, starting with the plan. Uh, yeah, now the pipeline is allocating the agent is checking out the repo, creating the directory, which already exists, but yeah, it's fine. It installs the Terraform package, copy the Terraform files from a repo, replaces the tokens in them, uh, initiates Terraform, validates it, and now it is planning. Ah, that was quick. Okay, so as you can see, uh, you can, this is quite, readable format. I wouldn't say it's super readable, but yeah, if you know what you're deploying, uh, I think uh, it is quite okay to go for that. So what is my plan now? So I, I'm i trying to deploy the uh, apps, app, what is it, resource group. Yeah, I have this app insights here, also the app source plan. Yeah, I think, I think I'm pretty okay with this. Yeah, <laughs> and now, yeah, I haven't set up any approval works yet, so it is uh, applying right away because I wanted to show you live uh, later. Yeah, so here uh, we are already in the apply stage and, uh, and the Terraform is applying the generated plan against my environment. It shouldn't take too much time, I think it should be like, uh, up to two minutes. Okay. Uh, speaking of the approvals, we can we can check this later once it's finished. Another feature of Azure DevOps is that it creates uh, for you the environments. So um, I will go back here just for a second. Yeah, here to app pipeline. As you can see, I have here uh, my environment specified, like uh, one environment per stage. This is dev, and here I have yeah dev uh, apply there, and and they have been created as I run the pipeline in here. So what I would like to do is that like yeah, I don't want my um, pipeline to continue uh, without me uh, seeing the uh, plan and reviewing the plan. Uh, sorry. Mm. So I will go inside in here and would uh, click on this approvals and checks. Uh, then I will, and for now, I will use myself as a prover and I will write some inf in instructions to approve like, like a review the plan and approve project. Great. So uh, now every time, uh, if, if I run the pipeline next time, it will stop um, before the second stage. Okay, is it still running or? No, it is already finished. Okay, apply to dev. Now I can show you in my Azure, what have I created just now? So I've created this resource group with those resources, absolute slot, and uh, also 
the local analytics like workspace with the application insights. Okay, so I was bragging about uh, how it's um, super easy to uh, deploy to any environment, and yeah, now you see just one. So um, let's just look at that. Um, uh, it, it is really super easy. All you need to do is basically just copy everything you have here and paste it below. And, and you would just change some um, identifier as, as your environment. So you would just change it to prod and you would have to like create uh, your uh, libraries, your new libraries with the parameters uh, sorry, not parameters, but the values for the production environment. I have, I have, um, yeah, prepared uh, this so that I can, so I don't have to edit it. So, but it is really the same thing. So I will just add up this piece of code here. Yeah, commit. And now when I want to run the pipeline, I can click here and I will check the stages to run. And as you can see now, I have four stages. So yay, I was successful. But before I think I, I want to set up uh, the approval check for, uh, for, for the apply to, so that we can see it as I don't want to run the dev again. Approvals and checks. Oh, I already have one. Okay. Okay, so I already have the approval there. I had to do it beforehand, I assume. All right, so uh, now I, I will hit the run the pipeline again. And uh, since I really just want to demo you another environment, I can easily deselect the, the environments I don't want to I don't want to deploy to. And yeah, I will use the static stages and run it. Okay. Well, okay. As you can see, this this environment got skipped, and we continue with the uh, plan in prod. Yeah, and it will go through the very same tasks. Okay. As uh, as this will be running, I want to show you. Uh, one more thing about this replace token task. Mm. Uh, let me re yeah. So, validate. Yeah. Okay, in here, I specify this replace token task. Which is like really simple parameters in it. Um, it, it. You specify your target files in your repo, and then uh, you specify the token prefix and suffix. So I have specified hashtag curly bracket and closing curly black bracket here, and um, hence um, that's why my variable df files are using this token. Uh, yeah, you you can see hashtag curly brackets anywhere. And the thing is that you can use any token you want. You just need to then use it in your configuration. Uh, uh, I was more used to uh, use the dollar sign and curly brackets, but then um, it was a bit um, uh, inescapable with some Terraform config, which also uses the dollar sign sometime and also the curly brackets. So, so you really can use any characters you like, but it should be something that is not uh, like uh, the main thing or it's been not used in your language or yeah, in the tool you use. Okay, let's go back to see how our deployment is doing. Uh-huh, so it is stopped because I have, uh, I have put on the approval checks. Yeah, and just to be uh, precise, I will briefly check the plan. Yeah, that's a permanent. Text of the test. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, looks good to me. 
Okay, so I am I am really adamant that I want this to be deployed, approved. Also, uh, when you set up these checks, uh, the email is being sent out to the receiver, so it's also handy. Apply. Okay, um, I, th I think um, I'm very close to the to the end of my actual demo. So if you have any questions in the meanwhile, <laughs> or comments, or maybe your own experience of how you run the Terraform, if you ever did, you can, you can join. Guys, if the, there is a question, of course, you can unmute yourself or even uh, enable camera and video and stuff like that. So no problem. Don't hesitate. Just uh, let's chat because this, uh, this is really a platform for a discussion. So yeah, really open. So don't hesitate. Thanks. Hi, it's Martin speaking. Hi. So, um, I'm curious um, about the libraries that you are using and the variable groups. Like, don't you find it, um, uh, you know, that you moved your infrastructure to the code, right? With the Terraform. Yeah. Uh, but these, um, these libraries, they are not really focusing on the configuration as a code. <laughs> which uh, is something that we change in our company. So we moved from the libraries to generate generating configuration via code. Mm -hmm. And some, for example, in, in the Terraform, I'm, it, like it's usually in the Terraform to combine, to, to get the variables, right? And for example, to give a name to the, to the resource that you use the different yeah. joins, concats, whatever. Yeah. And um, what we are doing is that we rather are not touching it on the Terraform side, but we expect that, that the variable comes predefined. So it's so the configuration is complete, and you just apply it to the to the Terraform, mm -hmm. and we moved to uh, a JSON structure for the mm -hmm. configuration, and then we are not using the Terraform variables um, like you showed, but uh, the TF files, TF bars um with the complete structure but it has a downside well it's not a downside but the structure that you have in the json you need to have in the in the terraform as well mm -hmm. it allows you to have more rich structure like um in your uh, variables you have just a single um single string for example or a single integer right yeah but um, i mean it's not a problem to convert it to to uh, maps or to lists i mean yeah. It's just yeah the way I did it initially, and then it, it, I, I think it is not so uh, difficult to yeah. To yeah it, no, of it. course it's mm -hmm. it's not. So I'm just mentioning. So what mm -hmm. we're doing that we are actually generating the, the 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 configuration that is needed to build not just the infrastructure, but as well to um, the variables that are needed uh, for the pipeline itself as a separate artifact, and then we download this artifact and we we apply it to to the pipelines or to the terraform uh, yeah. terraform stages and so this json is generated by some code you say or or you store this json somewhere else or it's a, it's a library which is called the lipsonet okay and it generates it's um, basically mm -hmm. it it gives you uh, rich features of the functions and variables that you can use mm -hmm. to really generate the code so for example we're uh, creating uh, a common JSON structure, and then for the different very uh, environments like the DAO, um, demo, UAT, whatever, you just you just dis um, 
um, define what is different from the common infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah. Change. Yeah, um, definitely viable option on how to do that as well. Maybe what I would like to add up to the uh, variable groups is to think that like they also have some security and you really can like restrict the access to the library. You can even restrict the access to the specific pipeline only. So um, yeah, uh, I thought yeah. that this is this is um, more like. Um, user friendly i would say because yeah when i imagine like a long json file it scares me <laughs> because, because yeah you can just make some really stupid mistake and like everything is moved and yeah yeah of course so that's it's, why uh, i chosen this approach because yeah it's... we had it we had it before as well mm -hmm. but me personally i i didn't really like it because mm -hmm. of this um everything's moved to the as a code and mm -hmm. This is a, this actually contradicts it a bit, um, but yeah, because it's UI, then it's um, more mm -hmm. appearing yeah. than the JSON file. Okay, thank you. Um, and uh, also, like the way why I used the variable groups was because I yeah I really couldn't imagine that somebody. Because, okay, I was working on one project, but I knew that I will hand it over over some time to the client and I yeah, and I won't be responsible for it. So I really wanted to make it in a way so that it is easy to get into it so that you don't need to like stress about um, various files you need to access, you need to do this and this. So basically when um, they want to deploy a new environment uh, with variable groups, they would just do the clone and specify the new environment and change some, yeah, maybe the environment name, you know, in, in, in the naming convention and, and, and they are basically done and they just assigned a new variable group to, to their pipeline and they can, they can deploy. So that was my reasoning behind this, uh, why I was not focusing on, on maintaining the actual files, but keeping it here in Azure DevOps native solutions. Okay, and so I think this has finished. So let's see what was Deployed. So I can see additional two stages have been, uh, sorry, two resource groups uh, in production environment, let's say, have been added with the very same configuration and, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the magic I wanted to show you today. Um, any other questions or discussion points from anybody? Um, it looks like everybody's fine, like no, no questions. Yeah, it looks like. Um, uh, so, Martina, uh, uh, is it uh, the, the, all the stuff you wanted to cover for today from yes. your side? Yes. Yeah, cool. So maybe, guys, if there is a question comment anything suggestion or maybe some idea uh, for some topic I, I have a question if i may mm -hmm. uh, it's cool. not to martina but maybe it's in general so um to to spin up the infrastructure with the terraform that's that's one task right but then over the time um there definitely comes a situation where you need to manually touch the, the infrastructure which changes the state and um, how how people address this like example um, you have an AKS in the Azure Kubernetes um, you have uh, you spin up the default pool with uh, three worker nodes and then 
um, suddenly you figure out that you need to you need to scale to the four because your production is under high load. So you do it manually because that's the fastest thing you do, right? With um, kubectl or whatever, or just go to the portal. Um, but there is now the the state Terraform state is not not consistent with what uh, what is there. So the the plan or apply, I'm not sure which one will fail actually. So how how do people usually do it approach it like do you um, move the state to the previous um, previous state it was like de uh, decrement the number of the worker nodes or you manually import it through the through the terraform CLI um, that depends I think that the 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 thing you mentioned was more uh, about the node pools, like like this uh, configuration within the node pools, not in AKS itself, right? Uh, yeah, but it was an because, example. It, it doesn't yeah. matter what, what it is, actually. Because um, you, you can like um, modularize your um, um, infrastructure, infrastructure as code more like you can uh, deploy like your critical infrastructure within one state file and then uh, the services you want to scale out later, uh, you put it in a separate pipeline in separate state file and yeah, and you build on it. Sometimes that's so, not possible because like, for example, in the case of the cluster, then um, in the example, uh, the, the pool that's a, that's a part of the creation of the cluster. Yes, we mean the default one. Okay. Yeah, default one. Yes. Mm, yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of uh, doing changes from the target. So I would just say uh, don't do the changes from the target. But it's, really it's, try to do it as yeah, much as you can through the target. But sometimes it's, sometimes it's fast. You know, you need to solve something quickly. And it's not always easy in the companies to to propagate something to the production. Mm -hmm. Because when you have infrastructure as a goal, the, the main reason is that you need to go through the, all the stages, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, QA, non-prod, whatever you have. So yeah. it takes time. But your clients are facing the, <laughs> the issue right now. Yeah. But I think that AK is really specific in this because I, yeah, I, I know that, that, that like, lots of properties can force the resource recreation so exactly yeah i mean aks is a hell in a way you know yeah it is so i, I i'm not even sure like if there's any other resource uh, that is so sensitive on everything so yeah maybe aks is not super infrastructure as code ready yet yeah maybe it will come in maybe. future yeah. well there is still possibility to say that what property of the terraform state mm -hmm. is out of the life cycle right mm -hmm. ah that's true yeah you can ignore the changes so there that is a possibility but then you need mm -hmm. to be really specific and mm -hmm. careful of course okay yeah. good thanks okay Francis, do you have anything to add up yeah, well, uh, from my side, not, not, not really to the topic. Uh, I, I'm just curious whether there are some other guys, maybe with some uh, comments, ideas, maybe for upcoming, maybe uh, event. Uh, so that would be great to, to just have some, uh, some feedback from other guys also, maybe whether there, it was right fitting with this uh, format. How, how it was delivered by Martina or whether we should focus more on some, I mean, different format or maybe some different topic or maybe some scenario or something like that. I would like to hear something from guys, uh, whether, whether there is something. Yeah, so maybe now ideally, but if not now, uh, it would be great to, to maybe have after so yeah anyone anyone else have some idea uh and of course i would be really happy in case there is someone 
we with the suggestion to go for delivery of uh, of some nice session of course that would be great to share uh, so it's i mean not necessarily like to be really long it could be maybe 30 minute shot or maybe in combination with other guys uh, or, you know to just show something really specific and to to just share for a i mean really really just a bunch of minutes a dozen of minutes and uh, we could be done and we could do that regularly so it could be just uh, as a discussion uh, maybe also yeah to to share some ideas uh, or what you are working on now or whether you are learning something that could be also interesting how you are progressing with some things like kubernetes for example or, or something like that by the way uh maybe i'm just thinking about some uh, kubernetes uh, related stuff uh, to be delivered from my side maybe uh, next time uh, so yeah i mean from my side i'm more into the uh, vmware uh, area so to run kubernetes on top of the vsphere uh, but also on aws azure delivery of those uh, an automation of Kubernetes uh, deliveries or, or, or deployments uh, in multi-cloud or cross-cloud and to manage management across. So that would that would be maybe also interesting to see some feedback then uh, about that one. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure whether where the majority here, guys, you are working on the level of uh, development, software development, code or you are on the more on the edge on the infrastructure or you some of you maybe you are devops across all of those domains uh yeah so i mean it could be from both sides maybe um uh, but uh but yeah well i mean that, that would be really really great to have some at least some feedback and some suggestions so i will hunt for for guys for some topics also uh, but if, if you have something on your mind now, uh, of course, uh, don't hesitate. Just, uh, just um, send, me, send me some notification or some comment on, the, on a meetup page. Uh, yeah. And we will, of course, also uh, publish this recording to YouTube uh, channel DevOps Slovensko. Yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, this will be shareable then later um yeah so all right so i can see anything uh from guys right now so definitely um maybe martina if you have some uh, idea about about topics maybe which i could potentially put into the uh, into the pool uh if you have some idea right now i can do that uh, maybe if you have something on your mind to ask guys uh uh for some pool uh i mean survey or something like that uh if you have something on your mind what to Not, ask all right i don't know I'm, I'm trying i'm just thinking that like what would really interest me is um if like microservices approach and now and now, like if if somebody has like um Lots of experience from many microservice projects. It would, be, it would be nice to get some best practices on how to run the projects or like what are the gaps in that approach. And mm -hmm. yeah, that that would be interesting for me, for instance. Mm -hmm. As so, uh, as um, yeah, I, I've been to two projects with microservices now, mm -hmm. and um, and I still feel like there is lots of mess around. So if somebody did it mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. at some point so it'd be great great to uh share the the tips yeah okay so microservices instance. maybe another mm -hmm. one would be kubernetes mm -hmm. uh itself uh uh maybe let's put some third one what you would like to see maybe uh martina as uh, some some something uh, which is on top of your list of uh, things to to, see um, way, to, to check for or uh, on your radar on your radar for 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 tech, like technologies or or design 
uh, mm -hmm. principle. Maybe if you have something on your mind, I can really now. Yeah, I think it comes to my mind now. Like, yeah, I mentioned there's microservices, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know All what right. else at the moment. All right, cool. Yeah, perfect. So I'm just uh, I'm just putting it there, uh, and let's 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 have it there. So. Uh, all right so I'm, i just pushing it right now so All right, so we have something. Yeah, we have some question. Okay. In the so, chat. All right. Zero downtime deployment. I'm not really sure what what it is really because yeah. Sorry, I don't understand the question really. Uh, which one? From from Marek Hoff right there. There is a question from Freiter, but I don't really no. Zero downtime deployments. Mm. Maybe if Mar Mar you, mean, you, you mean the upgrades of, of the of, of the services or what do you mean by the zero downtime deployment? Maybe you can uh, unmute yourself, Marek. Yeah, Marek, <laughs> you, if you can describe it uh, while the yeah, audio or uh, the chat. Or what do you mean by downtime, mm -hmm. zero downtime deployment? Uh, hello, everybody. So Hi. what I meant by that question is that uh, I'm a very newbie in this. I have absolutely mm -hmm. no idea like what Terraform is used for. But what I heard is that it can help when you have a running application on a on an environment and mm -hmm. you want to do the de deployments that are not uh, affecting customers that that that's what i mean with the zero downtime like mm -hmm. okay you definitely can do updates uh, on app service without it being um, um yeah restarted or whatsoever but it depends also on the architecture i would say like uh, because because some architectures require that after every update uh, the app needs to restart. But if you keep the configuration the same uh, and then do just like little updates and and uh, yeah uh, yeah that definitely is a benefit of it. Hello everybody. Maybe I can jump in. We we have this topic Hi. in our application, and uh, we don't have it uh, as. I mean, infrastructure as a code, but mm -hmm. we do have to deploy with zero downtime. And mm -hmm. I see a potential in, in uh, using DevOps and um, infrastructure as a code to automate this process. But basically what we do, and, and maybe uh, somebody from you guys who have experience with this infrastructure as a service uh, as a code can explain more. But what we need to do and what we do uh, manually right now is you have like four nodes running an application and you need to do an upgrade. So you shut down one of the nodes, you upgrade it, you bring it back and you leave the application running on the three nodes with the old code. Then you do the same with, for example, you know, the second node and uh, you uh, allow new users who come in only to log into your already upgraded nodes. And then you leave the rest of the users on the last node, you upgrade, upgrade all three, and then you need to uh, wait for the users to finish their tasks or log out. And once uh, you see all users gone from the last node, you don't have upgraded, you upgrade that one. And by that, doing this in this way, you have zero downtime for the users and you have your application upgraded. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, mm -hmm. there, there was also uh, an idea uh, from, uh, 
from uh, attendee John. I, I'm not sure about the real name, John Default. <laughs> nice one. Uh, but which is uh, regarding DevSecOps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so DevSecOps, I would say, is really, really interesting idea. Yeah. Really, really interesting one. So definitely I'm putting this on my notes uh, because really, I mean, this has to be there. Security has to be there these days embedded uh, right from the start. So should be, I mean, at least. So definitely this is a very, really, really strong area, uh, which I would like to cover maybe also partially personally, but of course, if someone is interested mm -hmm. and you know about someone interesting in this area to deliver session, that would be really, really great. I mean, uh, companies uh, like uh, Aqua Security Scanner uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, there are plenty of other uh, open source projects, vendors uh, covering these. Yeah, so right, I mean, on the level of code development pipeline, but also on the level of Kubernetes, for example, API access, uh, image scanning. Uh, so all those stages, image building, you know, complete posture uh, of security to be covered. That's really something. And even we are talking about Kubernetes itself, for example, there are plenty of potential uh, security issues there. Yeah. So, I mean, runtime of, of, of container itself, for example, uh, on what, what mode it's running, uh, you know, what is allowed, what is not allowed as a root mode or non-root mode and rest of those things, a lot of them. So yeah, really, I'm, I'm a fan of the, this topic, that's for sure. So really, thank you so much guys for feedback uh, via, via the pool. So really Kubernetes is there, microservices as a second one, infrastructure as a service uh, and image building. So definitely uh, all from my side, uh, it would be about the uh, DevSecOps, Kubernetes, but also microservices. So it depends on the speaker uh, who will be there. Perfect. So I don't want to prolong it uh, too much. So just a final, final call. So I'm just going to count uh, last chance to, to put something on the stage. So five, four, three, two, one. Guys, okay, cool. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, of course, Martina, thank you so much for your uh, for your delivery of session. That was really awesome, great stuff. So, uh, guys, let's let put some reaction. Let's have uh, I mean, clap clap uh, <laughs> icon there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, to to mm -hmm. make some applause and maybe. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I'm happy happy you joined, and uh, yeah, let's see us next time. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much again and keep safe all of you guys. You can unmute, you can say hello. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks. Cool. Bye. Stay Thank safe. You. Bye. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Take care. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye thanks.